Recently, two very popular carnivore influencers have been attacked online, with people claiming that their carnivore diets have made them pre-diabetic. In fact, this video making this exact claim has been viewed more than 1.5 million times on Instagram. All of your favorite carnivore influencers are running into the same health issues, and here's the proof. First, let's have a look at Carnivore Cam. He's now borderline diabetic, but Cam's not the only one. Carnivore Ray is at a similar point. So why is it that these carnivores are supposedly becoming diabetic? And does this mean that a carnivore diet could actually cause diabetes for some people? Well, today, we're breaking it all down. Let's get straight into it. Firstly, what even is type 2 diabetes? Type 2 diabetes has one single and very simple definition, prolonged elevated blood sugar levels. Prolonged meaning continuing for a long time. So type 2 diabetes in simple terms is constantly high blood sugar levels. This is the only definition of type 2 diabetes and it's very important to clarify that. Now there are multiple ways to test for type 2 diabetes, but there are two main tests that are most commonly used. The first is fasting glucose. Glucose is sugar. So fasting glucose is a measurement of sugar in the blood in a fasted state where someone has not eaten that day. Very straightforward. The other primary blood test for diagnosing type 2 diabetes is called a hemoglobin A1c test, often referred to as HbA1c. Today we're going to focus on HbA1c since this is the metric people online are using to claim these carnivores are pre-diabetic. The definition most people give is that HbA1c reflects the average blood glucose levels over the last 60 to 90 days or so. However, for this video, that simple definition doesn't allow me to explain why these carnivores are being seen as pre-diabetic, so we're going to have to use the slightly more complex definition. What HbA1c actually measures is what percentage of your hemoglobin is glycated. Now, that might sound complex, but I'll break it down in the simplest way possible, so that way in a minute's time you'll know exactly what it means even if you've never heard of any of these terms before. We can break it down into two words. Glycation and hemoglobin. Glycation by definition in its simplest terms is when sugar molecules attach to proteins and sometimes lipids that are part of your cells. When this happens it results in something known as advanced glycation end products which put very simply means your molecules become damaged from the sugar. So glycation essentially means sugar binds to parts of your cells and causes them damage. The more sugar you have in your blood over an extended period of time the more glycation occurs. And hemoglobin is a protein in your red blood cells. What HbA1c is measuring is what percentage of your hemoglobin is glycated, which can be translated to sugar damage done to a specific protein called hemoglobin in your red blood cells. So if someone is a type 2 diabetic and has lots of sugar in their blood, they will have a high HbA1c indicating sugar is causing lots of damage to their hemoglobin. In America and many other countries it's recorded as a percentage. So an HbA1c of 5.5 means 5.5% of your hemoglobin is glycated. Okay, so now we know how the key metrics used to diagnose type 2 diabetes actually work and what they represent. Let's now look at the blood work of these two carnivores who are supposedly pre-diabetic. In regards to fasting glucose, Carnivore Ray's is 96 milligrams per deciliter. Coach Carnivore Cam's is 93.6 milligrams per deciliter. A reading of 99 milligrams per deciliter and below is considered normal. A reading of 100 milligrams per deciliter and above is considered pre-diabetic. And over 126 on two separate tests means you're diabetic. So in terms of fasting glucose, Ray cannot be considered pre-diabetic, nor can Cam. But this is where things get interesting. Let's look at the HbA1c results. Carnivore Ray's is 5.5%. Coach Carnivore Cam's is 5.7%. In terms of the reference ranges for HbA1c, 5.6% and below is considered normal. 5.7 to 6.4 means you're considered pre-diabetic. 6.5% or higher is considered diabetic. If you'd like to get your own blood work done, I highly recommend today's sponsor, LabCorp On Demand. LabCorp On Demand offers over 80 different lab tests that you can purchase directly without a doctor's appointment needed. Getting a full blood panel can be frustrating. Traditionally, the process may be time consuming and difficult to get all of the tests you want ordered by your doctor. One time I asked my doctor to get my testosterone tested, along with my other blood markers. He said, you're too young to worry about your testosterone levels, of course they will be high and flat out refused. But it's not like this anymore. Now you can use the link below to purchase a test then either schedule an appointment online or walk into one of LabCorp's 2,000 plus 
patient centers for your sample collection. Your sample is collected just like it would be in a doctor's office. There's no need to prick your own finger. All testing is performed at LabCorp's CAP accredited CLIA certified clinical laboratories which process over 3 million samples every week. Within days, you'll receive an email when your results are ready, and you can access everything in your LabCorp On Demand patient account. My favorite part about LabCorps is how comprehensive their tests are. For example, the men's health test includes a comprehensive metabolic panel, a complete blood count, a full lipid panel, HbA1c, and total testosterone, all in one test. If you're looking to get your blood work done, I highly recommend clicking the link in the description below. You'll get 20% off your entire purchase. The link will take you directly to the men's health test, but if you use my link, trylco.com slash carnivore, and use code carnivore, you'll get 20% off any test. Thanks again to LabCorp On Demand for making videos like these possible. So, good news for Carnivore Ray, he's off the hook. His HbA1c of 5.5 is not pre-diabetic. Maybe the guy online claiming that he is pre-diabetic should publicly apologize to him. But when it comes to Coach Carnivore Cam, strictly looking at his HbA1c of 5.7%, and nothing else. He is technically in the pre-diabetic range, which from a surface level perspective, considering he's been on the carnivore diet for multiple years, may come as a shock. But there is a massive limitation to HbA1c readings, which is not factored in. So let's break this down. Has the carnivore diet actually made Coach Carnivore Cam pre-diabetic? And why is it that HbA1c increases for a small percentage of people on carnivore, even with very low carbohydrate and sugar intake? So First off, where does this glycation actually come from? I mean, obviously it comes from glucose, but where does the glucose on a carnivore diet come from? On a high carbohydrate diet, the majority of the glucose in your body comes from carbohydrates. This is because carbohydrates break down into glucose. But on carnivore, your diet is primarily proteins and fats. Proteins primarily break down into amino acids, and fats primarily break down into fatty acids and glycerol. But here's the thing, your body needs glucose. If your blood glucose dropped to zero, you die very quickly. So what happens is your body converts some of your proteins, dietary fats, body fat, and lactate which is a byproduct of exercise, into glucose. This process of converting non-carbohydrates into glucose is called gluconeogenesis. And this right here is where you get your glucose from on a carnivore diet. This is what maintains your blood sugar levels. Now, your body is very good at this process. It makes the exact amount of glucose that you need. Interestingly, this process still occurs even on a high-carb diet. In fact, studies suggest even on a high-carbohydrate diet, there's still a similar level of gluconeogenesis that occurs. This process right here is why there is absolutely zero requirement for carbohydrates in the human diet. Your body already produces the perfect amount of glucose, and any glucose that comes from carbohydrates is excess. From the surface, you'd expect HbA1c to be super low on carnivore. That right there is the logical conclusion. Considering the only glucose in your body is what your body produces, and it produces the perfect amount. However, there are a couple of things that can have a major effect on your HbA1c readings. The first is obvious, high blood glucose levels. More glucose in your blood means more possible glycation, so more hemoglobin becomes glycated. But there's another major factor that's often overlooked, the lifespan of a red blood cell. Remember, HbA1c is strictly measuring damage caused by glycation to the hemoglobin, which is that protein in our red blood cells. Sugar damage through glycation occurs throughout the body in many different types of cells. But HbA1c doesn't measure this body-wide sugar damage, it simply looks at the sugar damage done to the hemoglobin. This right here is a very important distinction. A red blood cell lives a lot longer, it has more time to become glycated, and therefore HbA1c will appear artificially higher. In a study on diabetics, they found that 30% of subjects had a red blood cell lifespan below 93 days, while 69% had a lifespan ranging from 93 to 123 days. A couple of people even had red blood cell lifespans over 123 days. As you can see, there's great variability in red blood cell lifespans person to person. So, what causes red blood cells to live longer? Firstly, low oxidative stress. Oxidative stress is caused by inflammation. So if you have less inflammation in your body, your red blood cells will live longer. Secondly, stable blood sugar levels. High blood sugar levels results in lots of glycation, which damages your red blood cells severely and causes them to die a lot sooner. Another major factor is the strength of your cell membranes. This is the protective outer layer of your cells. If your red blood cells have strong cell membranes, they're going to live a lot longer. Nutrients like omega-3s and cholesterol, 
which are very high in animal products, are essential for membrane stability. In fact, cholesterol makes up 50% of your cell membranes by weight and volume. So, if you're on a carnivore diet, which is the least inflammatory diet on the planet, with stable blood sugar levels, and you're providing your body with high amounts of all the nutrients it needs so your cell membranes can stay nice and strong and stable, there's a high probability your red blood cells are going to live for a long time. In that study on diabetics we looked at earlier, there was great variability even between people who had a similar health status because, I mean, well, they were all diabetics. But what's interesting is that there were only two people out of 131 who had an average red blood cell lifespan of more than 123 days. But in healthy individuals, the average red blood cell lifespan is roughly 120 days. Across the entire population, the average is considered to be between 90 and 130 days. But keep in mind, this fact is in that most people nowadays are metabolically unhealthy. When you put this into context, the difference in red blood cell lifespan makes a massive difference on HbA1c scores. Imagine two people. Both have an HbA1c of 5.7%. Person 1 is an unhealthy individual and has an average red blood cell lifespan of only 80 days. Whereas person 2 is a very healthy individual with an average red blood cell lifespan of 125 days. Now both of their measured HbA1c scores are exactly the same. But let's look at what happens when we calculate their adjusted HbA1c based on their actual red blood cell lifespan. To calculate this, we input the standard average red blood cell lifespan, which for this formula is considered to be 100 days. The reason this number is used instead of 120 is because it sits nicely in the population average range of 90 to 120 days, and it makes for much simpler calculations. So we take that number, 100 days, then we divide it by the actual red blood cell lifespan. 100 divided by 80 is 1.25. 100 divided by 125 0.8. And finally, we multiply this number by their measured HbA1c. Person 1, the unhealthy individual, has an adjusted HbA1c of 7.125%, which using the adjusted HbA1c formula would mean they're actually diabetic. Whereas person 2, the healthy individual, has an adjusted HbA1c of only 4.56%. Suddenly, their HbA1c looks perfect. Now, by no means is this a perfect, rigorously tested formula that should be used to calculate your true HbA1c score. However, what it does do is clearly show the massive drawback with standard lab HbA1c scores. They essentially punish you for being a healthy individual with strong, long-living red blood cells, and as a result, it makes your reading seem like you have more glucose in your blood than what you actually do. And for the record, this isn't just some theory that I'm making up on the spot. I mean, it'd be pretty cool if I was the person who discovered this, but actually it's a known limitation in HbA1c interpretation, and it's been published in peer-reviewed studies. What's really interesting is that in that study we looked at earlier, the one that looked at the average red blood cell lifespans, what they also did was test all the participants HbA1c, and compared it to their red blood cell lifespan. And what they found was this. The conclusion of the study was adjusted HbA1c and laboratory HbA1c showed clinically relevant differences. And this finding has been replicated in multiple other studies as well. So, what does all of this mean? What this means is that HbA1c is not a perfect marker. It only measures the glycation going on in your red blood cells. So you can have relatively low blood glucose levels and very low glycation happening throughout your body but still have a relatively high HbA1c because your red blood cells live a lot longer. So, is Coach Carnivore Cam actually pre-diabetic? Of course not. Type 2 diabetes, again, is defined as prolonged elevated blood sugar levels. His fasting glucose of 93 milligrams per deciliter is well below 100. So, he does not have prolonged elevated blood sugar levels. HbA1c is not a reliable indicator of diabetes if blood glucose levels are normal. That being said, I do want to make a very important point. Even though HbA1c does have this limitation, it's still a very important blood marker for many people. If your HbA1c is considerably high, 6% or above, you shouldn't just ignore it. It's a clear sign you've got at least a considerable amount of glycation going on. I'm simply pointing out that for some people on Carnivore, your HbA1c might come back slightly higher than expected, not because of high blood sugar levels, but simply because your red blood cells are living a lot longer. At all times there's sugar in your blood, so there will always be some glycation happening. It's impossible to get your HbA1c down to zero. So if your red blood cells live longer, it will be a lot harder to have a very low HbA1c. If your HbA1c is higher than you'd like, the best thing to do is to get a continuous glucose monitor and track your blood sugar levels for a week straight. I'm very confident if you're on a carnivore diet, 
what you'll find is you don't have prolonged elevated blood sugar levels. The reality is when type 2 diabetics go on carnivore, their type 2 diabetes typically reverses. When you have this condition that is quite literally defined as you have too much sugar in your blood, it's not surprising that it reverses when you stop consuming sugar and let your body regulate glucose production naturally, which it does to perfection. If you enjoyed watching me break down this ridiculous claim about the carnivore diet, you'll probably also enjoy this video right here I made, where I break down all of PhD Lane Norton's ridiculous claims about the carnivore diet. Anyways, as always, great speaking with you. I'll see you next time.